let's talk about redox reactions. Get out your science notebook. Let's write the essential question at the top of your page. How do we recognize redox reactions based on oxidized and reduced elements? Some of you might be a little confused at this moment because we've talked about five main types of reactions and we haven't talked about redox reactions before. Well, redox reactions aren't a main type of reaction. They're just a subset of these five types. In fact, four out of five of them are also redox reactions. Well, what is a redox reaction? Redox reactions are reactions that are driven because they transfer electrons. If you take a look over here, this is a bolt that is rusted and it has gone through a redox reaction. Redox is short for reduction and oxidation. Let's take a look what that means. Here's a little saying I want you to remember. Leo the lion says grr. This is gonna help you remember which is which in terms of reduction and oxidation. Losing electrons is oxidation. Gaining electrons is reduction. And both of them are transferring electrons, which is the whole point of a redox reaction. Let's take a look at what we mean by transferring of electrons. We learned this back in Chem 1, but let's take a closer look again. You might recall that atoms will gain or lose their outermost or valence electrons in order to gain a full outer shell. A couple things to remember about this. Electrons are negatively charged. That's important. When we talk about transferring electrons, we need to understand it in terms of moving, either receiving or losing negative charge. One thing to also note, elements do not have a charge until they bond. We've written charges on the periodic table. Those are all predictable charges that elements will become, but they're not what elements are free floating in nature. In fact, let's take a look at an example of transferring electrons. Here we have a magnesium atom, and this magnesium atom by itself does not have a charge. Over here we have two fluorine atoms, and they also don't have charges. They haven't bonded yet. But you might remember or recognize or maybe even can predict what's going to happen here. Magnesium is going to transfer its electrons to each of the fluorines. When magnesium does that, it is losing negative charge. It has lost two electrons. By losing two negatively charged particles, magnesium then comes become magnesium then becomes positively charged, specifically positive two because it lost two electrons. Now, each of the fluorines will each gain one electron. Therefore, each of them individually will become negatively charged, negative one each, because each of them are gaining one negatively charged electron. Now, we can write this in terms of a chemical equation. In fact, this is what that chemical equation might look like. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. Also remember, elements do not have a charge when they're just plain elements, when they're not bonded. So here's magnesium, zero charge, and fluorine, which is also zero charge. Now, when magnesium and fluorine attach and make magnesium fluoride, those charges reveal themselves because magnesium lost two electrons, and each of those fluorines gained one electron electron each. Here we can see magnesium is being oxidized. Remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. Fluorine is being reduced. Each of them are because reduction is gaining electrons. Here's another example of a redox reaction. This time we're just going to take a look at the reaction itself. Now the question is, is this a redox reaction? Well, let's take a look. When we start off, we can see that copper 2 sulfate has a positive 2 charged copper and a negative 2 charged sulfate. Here we have a gold element, and it doesn't have a charge because it's just an element. It's not bonded to anything. These two reactants are going to go through something called a single replacement reaction. Gold is going to replace copper because they're both metals. And we can predict that gold is going to be positively 2 attached to this sulfate, which is negatively 2. Copper, on the other hand, is going to come and become zero charge because it's going to go off by itself in the single replacement reaction. Now let's take a look at what's happening here. There are a few substances going through a transfer of electrons. We can see that copper, starting with the positive two, goes and becomes zero charge. Well, how did it do that? Well, it had to gain two negative charges in order to cancel out that positive charge. That's how it became zero. So copper gained electrons. Gold, on the other hand, started off with no charge and it lost two electrons and it became positively charged. 
Now, sulfate does not go through a transfer of electrons. Its charge doesn't change from the reactants to the product state. But there are a couple things that are going through a transfer of electrons. This is indeed a redox reaction. And in this case, copper is being reduced because it is gaining two electrons, and gold is being oxidized because it is losing two electrons. Here's a practice problem that I want you to try yourself. Pause this video right now and see if you can answer this question. What is being oxidized and what is being reduced in this redox reaction? You know it is a redox reaction, so prove it by showing which elements are being oxidized and which being reduced, similar to the problem we had before. Did you pause the video? I hope you tried it out yourself. Let's take a look. Here we can see potassium and oxygen in the beginning, or the reactant state, are both zero charge because they're just single elements. They haven't bonded yet. But when potassium and oxygen meet, they form a compound. Potassium we can predict to be positive one charge based on this position on the periodic table, and oxygen we can predict to be minus two charge. And you can see here that potassium, we need two of them to bond with this one oxygen. All right, now if we take a look at the transfer of electrons, there are some elements transferring their electrons. Potassium starting with zero charge and becoming positive one. In order to become positively charged, it had to lose a negatively charged electron. Potassium in this case is oxidized. Oxygen, on the other hand, starting with zero charge, gained two electrons each, and they became minus two charge. So in this case, oxygen is reduced. This is indeed a redox reaction. Let me give you one more example. Is this a redox reaction? Well, if we start off and look at the change in charges, iron two sulfide is plus two minus two, and hydrochloric acid is plus one minus one. If we look at the products, iron two chloride is plus two minus one, and sulf hydrogen sulfide or dihydrogen sulfide is positive one and negative two. If we follow the charge states from beginning to end, iron doesn't change, sulfur doesn't change, Hydrogen doesn't change, and chlorine doesn't change either. There are no transfer of electrons in this reaction. This is not a redox reaction. That leads us to the end of our notes. Let's take a moment right now and go ahead and review, maybe go back and highlight some key terms and underline some essential pieces. Ponder and ask questions. If you're not understanding something, seek answers to those questions. Finally, summarize and answer that essential question in a deep way. All right, good luck.